Thank you for joining me on this latest edition of Mobile Bible Study, The Bible Doesn't Say That. And today we will be tackling the issue of, does the Bible say that we all must speak in tongues as evidence of having the Holy Spirit? We know this is a traditional teaching of the, the charismatic churches, Pentecostal holiness churches, and we want to see if there is any evidence in the Bible that this is so. But let's figure it out. All right, so here are our Bible study tips. Number one, let us always aim to exegete pulling from the text, the author's intended meaning. Number two, let us never eisegete, reading into the text our own opinions and thoughts. Number three, let us use scripture to interpret scripture. Okay, so when we talk about speaking in tongues, the main text that is used is Acts chapter two. So let us read the text and see exactly what it says. All right. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as a fire, and one sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Okay, so we know that God does every single thing with a purpose. So here in Acts chapter 2, the Holy Spirit fell on the disciples and they spoke in tongues. But the purpose was that those who were outside would hear them speaking the glory of God in their own languages, which would cause shock and awe. Then in Acts chapter 8, the Holy Spirit would fall upon the Samaritans in the same exact way so that the apostles would see that God had poured his spirit out on the Samaritans as well. Then in Acts chapter 10, the apostles had to see again with their own eyes that God poured his spirit out on the God fearing sect of Gentiles who followed the laws of the Jews. Then in Acts chapter 19, the apostles had to again see that God poured his spirit out on the Ephesian Gentiles. So then they spoke in tongues. So all of these things were done with a purpose to corroborate the fact that the Holy Spirit was being poured out on all flesh, Jew, Samaritan, God fearer and Gentile alike. Okay, so it's starting to make a little more sense now, right? Okay, let me make things a little more clearer for you. Let's go back to Genesis chapter 11, to the very beginning. Okay, the nations were one. They all spoke the same language. Yet their hearts were foolish because they didn't have a righteous mindset. They wanted to build a tower that reached into heaven. So God, knowing the evil intent of their hearts, he came down and he confused their languages so they wouldn't understand each other. So this effectively built the language barrier between all of the nations. So it's getting good now, right? OK, so check this out. Um, in Numbers chapter 11, God took some of the spirit that was on Moses and gave to 70 other elders. And they began to prophesy, right? But there were two who continued to prophesy after the other 68 stopped. Eldad and Medad. And Joshua went to Moses and said, forbid them, tell them to stop. But Moses said, are you, are, are, are you jealous for me? Don't be jealous on my behalf. He said, I wish that all of the Lord's people were prophets and that he would put his spirit upon all of them. So then this was a precursor to what happened in Acts chapter two. Do you see where I'm going with this now? Okay, so before we can get to Acts chapter two, where they spoke in tongues, we have to stop at Joel chapter two, where he prophesied that this would happen, that the spirit of God would be poured out among all believers, among all flesh, all those who believe. This prophecy 
came after the anticipation that Moses had in Numbers chapter 11, that God would pour his spirit out upon all believers. This is a purpose being fulfilled. And as we finally bring it back to Acts chapter 2, we see that that prophecy has been fulfilled with the disciples speaking in tongues on the day of Pentecost. This effectively broke down the language barrier that God erected in Genesis chapter 11. This put Jew Gentile, Samaritan, and God-fearers on the same level playing field in Christ, that there be no superior nor inferior, that we're all on the same level, so all the barriers have been broken down in Acts chapter 2. Now that we know why they spoke in tongues and what speaking in tongues represented, why do we still have the understanding that speaking in tongues is the evidence for having the Holy Spirit for all Christians. This was not a normal situation. It was not a normative thing. This was not something that was supposed to be happening over and over again. This was supposed to be a big special event. And we undervalue the, the whole purpose of Pentecost by trying to recreate it over and over and over and over again. It was a big special event. Same like the parting of the Red Sea or Jesus walking on water or the burning bush or any of those things. These were big, significant events in the history of the church that will not be replicated again. With that said, let's look at first Corinthians chapter 12. And let's look at. Verse four, there are diversities of gifts, different kinds of gifts, but the same spirit. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. There are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. But the manifestation of the spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the spirit to another the word of knowledge through the same spirit, to another faith by the same spirit, to another gifts of healings by the same spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the discernment of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But one and the same spirit works all these things distributing to each one individually as he wills, as he sees fit. Okay, so if the Holy Spirit has all of these diverse gifts, think about it. If he has all of these different types of gifts for all of these different types of people and he manifests himself in whatever way he chooses that would benefit whatever body of Christ this person is in, why would he give us all the same one? That doesn't even make sense that he would give us all the same one. It's not logical that he would give us all the same one. It serves no purpose that he would give us all the same gift that these gifts he gives us works one with the other. So we can't all have the same one. I'll prove it to you. Okay, check out 1 Corinthians 14. Verse 22 says, Therefore, tongues are for a sign, not to those who believe, but to unbelievers. But prophesying is not for unbelievers, but for those who believe. Therefore, if the whole church comes together in one place and all of y'all speak with tongues and there come in those who are uninformed or unbelievers, will they not say that you are out of your mind? It does not make sense for everybody to speak in tongues. That is not the purpose of it. It doesn't serve a logical purpose that way. Okay, look at Ephesians 1.13. In him, Christ, you also trusted. After you heard the word of truth, 
the gospel of your salvation after you heard the gospel that saved you and whom also having believed you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory. So after we heard the gospel, after the gospel was preached to us and we believed it, we were saved and at that very moment sealed with the Holy Spirit. Flip back really quickly to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Let's look at verse 29 where Paul asked a series of rhetorical questions are all apostles no are all prophets no are all teachers no are all workers of miracles no do all have gifts of healings no do all speak with tongues no do all interpret no it is not possible for all of us to have the same gifts it doesn't make sense okay so to sum it up The purpose of speaking in tongues was to, one, break down the language barrier as the church was being born in the New Testament. This spread the gospel faster and further. Number two, this was an indictment on the Jews who resisted the gospel message that God had now moved on to the salvation of the rest of the world. Number three, This gave the believing Jews the evidence that they needed to see the anticipation of Moses and the prophecy of Joel fulfilled. Four, this aided in drawing new converts to the fledgling church through the miracle of this gift. There are accounts of this still happening today. And five, this is also a private prayer language between you and God. But the Bible is clear that all believers don't have this gift nor do they all need to have this gift because the Holy Spirit has so many more gifts that we can utilize to benefit the whole church. So the verdict is that clearly the Bible doesn't say that. However, I can see how because of the book of Acts that people can understand it that way. Yet we must see the complete purpose of the Holy Spirit was to be poured out on all flesh, on all believers, not just a few who spoke in tongues.